Hello everyone, I am Dr. Simone Atkinson from Get to the Point Nursing Notes. Today we are reviewing care of the patient with altered level of consciousness, so let's get to the point. Altered level of consciousness refers to a state in which a person's awareness and responsiveness to the surrounding environment are impaired. And as healthcare professionals, we often encounter patients with varying degrees of an altered level of consciousness. And it can arise due to various factors such as traumatic brain injuries, strokes, infections, intoxication, or metabolic disturbances. And we will be focusing on the impact that altered level of consciousness has on patients care and outcomes. Altered level of consciousness means a change in how alert or awake someone is, and it can also affect their thinking, their memory, perception, emotions, and their problem solving. When someone's consciousness changes, it's a sign that something might be wrong with their brain or nervous system. It could be because of problems in their brain itself, like changes in the reticular activating system or in the cerebrum, or it might be caused by issues in other parts of the body like the respiratory or the cardiovascular systems. Metabolic disorders are one of the things that can affect the brain at the cellular level, and they can cause imbalances of chemicals inside the cells, which make the brain's nervous cells not work like they should. And this can cause changes in consciousness or how someone even thinks and how they even feel. Now, when we talk of coma, that is a prolonged state of unconsciousness lasting from hours to months. It results from severe neurological damage to both brain hemispheres or to the brain stem. Coma patients show no response to external stimuli and have impaired cognitive and motor functions. So understanding coma's neurological origins is going to be crucial for appropriate care and interventions of these patients. So in cases other than damage to the brain stem, changes in consciousness and brain function follow a very predictable pattern, starting from higher cognitive functions to more primitive ones, and early changes in cerebral functions may manifest as confusion, forgetfulness, disorientation to time, person, and place, agitation, impaired problem-solving ability, or altered behavior. As cerebral deterioration increases, changes in consciousness shift to lethargy and stupor. In midbrain deterioration, purposeful movements progress to decorticate posturing, and the patient has small reactive pupils and positive doll's eyes reflex. That is, the eyes do not turn when the head is moved and they stay fixed in the original position. Now, decorticate posturing is recognizable by flexed elbows, wrists, and fingers with arms close to the sides and leg extension with internal rotation and plantar flexion. Further deterioration at the level of the pons will present with decerebrate posturing, fixed pupils, and a positive cold caloric test, which is seen when there's a sustained deviation of both eyes to the ear being stimulated with cold water. This is indicating the involvement of the vestibular cochlear reflex. Decerebrate posturing involves neck extension, clenched jaws, pronated and extended arms close to sides, and extended legs with plantar flexion. When the medulla is affected, fixed pupils, flaccid posturing, and a negative cold caloric test are observed, indicating even more severe impairment. The Glasgow Coma Scale is a crucial tool for assessing a patient's level of consciousness. It consists of three components, eye opening, scored 1 to 4, best verbal response, scored 1 to 5, and best motor response, scored 1 to 6. The total Glasgow Coma score ranges from 3 to 15, with a score of 8 or lower, typically indicating a state of coma. Several diagnostic and laboratory tests are used for assessing altered level of consciousness. Computer tomography and magnetic resonance imaging provide detailed views of the brain structure. Analyzing these images helps us identify conditions such as hemorrhage, tumors, cysts, edema, or brain atrophy, which could be contributing to our patient's altered level of consciousness. Electroencephalograms are essential for evaluating brain activity. They play a vital role in detecting unrecognized seizures that may be causing the patient's altered level of consciousness. 
Cerebral angiography enables visualization of blood vessels in the brain, and it helps us detect aneurysms and arteriovenous malformations that might be impacting the patient's consciousness as well. Transcranial, transcranial Doppler studies are used to assess blood flow in the brain, and they also provide valuable information about potential abnormalities. A lumbar puncture combined with cerebrospinal fluid analysis allows us to identify infections or inflammatory conditions affecting the central nervous system. Now let's shift our focus to the laboratory tests that we can use to identify other possible causes of changes in levels of consciousness. First, measuring blood glucose levels helps rule out hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia, both of which can significantly impact consciousness. Serum electrolytes and osmolarity tests evaluate electrolyte imbalances and osmolarity levels, which are also essential factors affecting brain function and consciousness. Assessing creatinine levels aids in evaluating kidney function, providing valuable information in cases of metabolic disturbances, and liver function tests can help reveal hepatic impairment. The CBC offers critical insights into the patient's overall health, and it can also indicate potential signs of infection or anemia. The arterial blood gas analysis helps assess the patient's respiratory and metabolic status and offers some insights as well into acid-base imbalances. And finally, toxicology screening assists in identifying drug-induced or toxic conditions that may be associated with altered levels of consciousness. In addressing altered levels of consciousness, our focus is on identifying and managing the underlying cause. We prioritize maintaining the airway, skin integrity, and nutrition while preventing contractures of the patient. We assess the ability to clear secretions, monitor breath sounds, and maintain a patent airway for unconscious patients. Proper positioning is also essential for those with artificial airways such as a tracheostomy or an endotracheal tube. We assess swallowing and gag reflex while implementing measures to prevent aspiration, such as elevating the head of the bed, and any signs of possible aspiration should be reported promptly to the healthcare provider. We assess skin integrity regularly, reposition clients every two hours, and take measures to prevent skin breakdown as the clients may not sense discomfort from pressure. So keep linens clean, lean, dry, and wrinkle-free at all times. Support devices can also be used to maintain the extremities and functional condition of our patients, and regularly performing passive range of motion exercises helps promote mobility and prevent muscle stiffness or contractures. Monitoring nutritional status and weight is crucial in caring for patients with altered levels of consciousness. Proper nutrition plays a role in promoting recovery and overall well-being of our clients. So regular assessments of their nutritional intake and weight allow us to address any deficiencies and ensure they receive the necessary nutrients for healing. In some cases, patients may have difficulty eating or swallowing due to their altered level of consciousness, and in such situations, we consider alternative nutritional support options to meet their dietary needs. So this may involve enteral feeding through a nasogastric or a gastrostomy tube, or parenteral nutrition when oral intake is not feasible. Addressing emotional needs is crucial for patients and their families who may experience anxiety and uncertainty at this time. So as healthcare professionals, we empathize with their challenges and create a compassionate environment. Effective communication and empathy will foster trust and it will allow patients and their families to express themselves openly with you. So we adapt communication to meet individual needs using yes or no questions when necessary in order to empower our clients and the family to communicate effectively. 
Family anxiety is common, especially with uncertain prognoses of our patients with altered levels of consciousness. And our role is to reinforce information. We wanna offer simple explanations and encourage open communication with the patient. We need to provide support services as needed, such as counseling and respite care in order to alleviate any anxiety and also to empower families during these times where the patient is having these altered levels of consciousness. All right, you're now armed with the knowledge to provide care for a client with altered level of consciousness. So if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and we will see you in the next video.